Won't you join me in the word of prayer? Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. In this time of tension and turmoil, speak to us. Thank you, God, for how you have moved in worship already. Now from your words, speak to my neighbor and speak to me. Transform our lives. Give us the hope that is only alive because of Jesus Christ. Stand in the frailty of my humanity. You speak, you move, you have your way. If there's someone among us in church or in saving, they come today giving themselves to you. For those of us who believe in you, belong to your church already, strengthen us. Deepen our devotion, our commitment, and our resolve to live for you. In Christ's name we pray. The people of God together say amen. amen. If you love God, are glad to be alive. Put your hands together. Give our God great praise today. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Please join me in giving God thanks and praise for Bishop Timothy Joseph Clark, my friend and my brother, his wife, their family. We celebrate you today. Please permit me just for a moment as you take your seats to express to your pastor uh, my uh, love and my thanksgiving to him for his friendship over these years. He will never know uh, the depth of my gratitude and my joy for being uh, his friend. I get asked, Jocelyn, all the time, how do you know him? And how did y'all become so close? And I just say, I, that's the spiritual answer is God did it. And that sounds deep and funny at the same time, but it is true. God connected our paths, and for that I am grateful. He and his wife and their family and you, First Church, are people that I pray for daily because you mean that much to me. My life is better because of the love and the friendship that we have shared over these years, and I thank God for him and for each of you. It is always my joy to come to this uh, town, this city, this space, and this place to share with you the joy of the Lord. If he had said a little while ago that he was going to preach, I would have stayed in my seat and been so happy because I just felt he had something he needed to share. But I'm going to stand for the few minutes that allowed it to me and get quickly out of the way. Again, I please uh, solicit your prayers as always as we strive to be and do all that God wants us to be and do for his glory. I want to invite your attention today to a very familiar passage of scripture. And I only want to read one verse of it. Psalm 23, verse number one, it says simply, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I didn't ask you to stand because it's really a short verse, you know it. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I want to preach today about trusted facts for uncertain times. Trusted facts for uncertain times. A few days ago, I ran across an advertisement from the Wall Street Journal which read, uncertain times call for trusted facts. And the subcaption read, navigate uncertainty with facts. This slogan, which was designed to solicit new subscriptions, immediately caught my attention because the words, Kevin, speak so much truth as it relates to our lives and to our living in this moment in time. I think that we'd all agree when I say that the times that we live in are at the very least uncertain. Uncertain is defined as not able to be relied upon, not known, or not Definite. That is our world today. Our world is definitely uncertain. The real truth is that life and living have always been uncertain. I mean, no matter what we think or thought what, about what we've known or been sure of in life, at any moment that could quickly change just like that. Life is uncertain. Things happen in the blink of an eye. Things change just like that. In a matter of minutes or moments, what was can no longer be. But in the last three years, all of us have been living in a perpetual state of uncertainty. We have dealt with shutdowns and school closings and churches closing. These have been some of the most uncertain days of all of our lives. Life as we once knew it has changed so much in just the last three years. We have been living in the reality of uncertainty. But in the midst of our uncertainty, uncertain reality, may I insert the words of certainty uttered in a favorite hymn. The hymn writer says, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry all the future for I know what Jesus said. 
And today I'll walk beside him for he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow and I know he holds my hand. First church, these words which are beautifully and poetically written and sung, they remind us and they reinforce for you and for me the undeniable and unshakable truth that although we may not know about tomorrow, if we know the Lord and our lives are anchored in him, then we know who holds tomorrow and we know who holds our hands. Is there anybody here who knows that they know that he holds their hands? That, that's a good thing to know. You ought to know who holds tomorrow and be sure that the one who holds tomorrow holds your hands. I, I may not know a whole lot of things, but I thank God I know God. And because I know God, I know that no matter what is going on, he will take care of me. It's because I know who the Lord is that the advertising slogan of the Wall Street Journal caught and captured my attention. And it did because each of us who is alive today needs some trusted facts for these uncertain times. We need some facts to navigate through the uncertainty of these days and the uncertainty of all of our lives. We need something and somebody who will lead us, who will guide us, who will help us at every step and juncture of our journey. Maybe I'm by myself, but I know I need somebody to lean on. I need somebody to hold my hand. I need somebody to help me because in the journey of life, the road gets rough and the going gets tough and I cannot make it by myself. I need the Lord to help me along my journey. Over the last few days, as I've looked at and pondered that statement and slogan of the Wall Street Journal, and thought about the context of the Christian faith and the world that which we live in today, uh, these words became clear to me. It became clear to me that we need God's word to help us and strengthen us and equip us to navigate in and through life's uncertainty. We need the word. That's why we study and we learn the Bible because we need an internal power to help us face our external search situations. We need the word to help us conquer our mountains and our Goliaths and our furnaces and our doubts and our struggles. We need the word. And although many scriptures invaded my thoughts for a few moments, uh, the 23rd Psalm verse 1 kept coming back to me over and over again. And it's there I want us to focus our preaching lens on just for a few moments. Psalm 23 is one of the most famous and familiar pieces of scripture in all the Bible. By its words, many have found comfort. Many have found solace and strength in the most difficult and daunting moments in life. The words of David have helped, have helped untold generation discover the reality of the hope and security that we have in God and because of God. May I insert today that if you are a child of God, that you and I ought to have hope. Hope is defined as the expectation of something good. And no matter how bad life is, no matter how rough life may become, no matter how difficult life is, the child of God ought to always have hope. When life is bad and difficult and dreary and hard, you and I ought to still expect something good. There is a bright side somewhere and you and I better never rest until we find it in this life you and I ought to have hope and the hope that we have is not in a man or a woman not in a liquor or a drug not in a car or a house our hope is in Christ our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood his righteousness you and I if we know Christ for real we ought to have hope and today, as you and I are yet in pursuit of renewing our hope, let's look at and learn from verse number one of this famous psalm. In that first verse, we know it. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. In verse one, David gives us trusted facts for uncertain times. As he writes Psalm 23 and begins the psalm with this uh, concretized statement of faith of who the Lord is and how the Lord affects his life, David uses a symbol that was for him uh, familiar. And to those he initially wrote to was familiar as well. David describes the Lord as a shepherd. Prior to being chosen by God to be king, David was, in fact, a shepherd himself. He went from shepherding to leading God's people as king. 
Shepherding had been his lot in life to care for God, protect, provide for the flock of God, the, the sheep that God had entrusted to his care. And now based on his experience and his remembrance, he reflects on God's presence in his life and he celebrates and acknowledges the Lord as his shepherd. David as shepherd boy understood what shepherding was and what shepherding entailed. And now he looks at God as father and says of God as father that the Lord is my shepherd. David is confidently and unequivocally certain about who the Lord is in his life and for his life. He said, ain't no doubt about it. The Lord is. He is my shepherd. David said, he's mine. I know him. I'm known by him. I'm owned by him. I own him. He is mine. D David is not talking uh, for anyone else or about anyone else. David is offering his testimony about who God is and what God has been for him. And let me say that you and I better make sure that we know God for ourselves. Thank God for what he was for my mother, father, my sister, my brother, my grandparents, for, or whoever. But you got to make sure that you're not trying to hitchhike to heaven on somebody else's testimony. You got to know the Lord for yourself. David says, I know him. He is my shepherd. Yahweh, Jehovah is my shepherd. David said, he's mine. Now, now some of you may not understand what the big deal about that is, but it's a big deal. Because as the shepherd... The shepherd was leader of the sheep. The shepherd protected the sheep against their enemies. Uh, the, the shepherd provided for the sheep, made sure they were fed and well. The shepherd looked after the sheep, and if a sheep was going astray, the shepherd went to after them to keep them and bring them back in the fold. So when David said, the Lord is my shepherd, he was simply but succinctly saying, the Lord is my God. He's my leader. The Lord is my protector. He'll take care of me. He'll fight my battles. The Lord is my provider. He will supply each and every one of my needs. Whatever I need, the Lord will provide. David was saying, the Lord is taking care of me. He's providing me. He's taking care of me. And he's leading me all the way. Throughout his life, David had dealt with and been through some uncertain times. He was overlooked and forgotten by his father despised by his father-in-law. He was laughed at by his wife for giving God praise. He made bad choices and decisions over and over again, but through it all, God was with him. Folk said he wouldn't make it, but God said he would. Folk laughed at him and looked down at him, but God raised him up. God was always by David's side, taking care of him and making ways for him out of no ways. And David said, I don't care what you think, say, or do. I am certain that the Lord is my shepherd. David had lived through and in some uncertain times. But he was certain about who God was and he was certain about what God had done and what God was doing for him. So certain was David about who God was and what God was doing for him. Then that same verse, David says of the shepherd, because he is shepherd, I shall not want. David was certain because of who God was and because of what God has done. Because the Lord was his shepherd, David said that he would never be in need. David was certain that God would provide for him, God would take care of him, and that God would supply not just one, but all of David's needs, God would supply. D David was certain that his need for shelter, God would supply. His need for food, God will supply. His need for protection, God will supply. Whatever his need in injunction of his life might be, David said, the Lord my shepherd will provide for me. And he was certain because throughout his life, God had proven to David that he was indeed his shepherd. Not just one time, but over and over and over and over again, God had been leading him. God had been guiding him. God had been protecting him. God had been providing for him over and over again. That was David's testimony. If you ask David, how'd you get here? He had to say, God did it. If you had David, how'd he get through that battle? He had to say, God did it. Because over and over and over again, God had been making ways for him. So David spoke facts. Not fiction, 
Not hyperbole, he spoke the facts. He spoke about who he knew and what he knew God had done for him. These were David's facts. And somebody in first church today ought to have some facts of their own about what God has done for you. Yeah, I know we don't do it much now like we did when we back in the old days, but, but every now and then, Brother Larry, you said to me as you were driving here, you ought to tell your testimony as much as you can to whomever we're here because nobody knows like you and I know what the Lord has done for us. You cannot take away the facts of my journey. And the fact is that God has been with me every step of my journey. And the facts of who God was and who God has been, they give us reason to trust him all the more. The facts of who God had been in David's life gave David the certainty to navigate through uncertain times. Because David was certain about God being God. When uncertain moments showed up in David's life, he said, I'm going to keep on pressing. I'm going to keep on pushing. I'm going to keep on going forward because I know who's brought me where I am. And, and today, these words are lifted before you and I because we are living in some uncertain times. The days of our living are difficult and daunting. The times that we live in are uncertain. And, and, and the uncertainty of our days and our times make us feel sometimes that we don't know how we are going to make it. We are living through economic uncertainty. We are living through political uncertainty. We, we, we don't know what's going to happen next. And when we live through, as we are living through these moments and days right now, it sometimes makes us feel as if we just want to throw in the towel. A anybody sick of stuff just happening like it's been happening? Sick of sickness, sick of death, sick of trouble, sick of turmoil, sick of stuff happening in our lives, but then we turn on the TV and what's happening in our lives is being, uh, being uh, exponentially magnified by what's going on in the world. Stuff is everywhere. Stuff is happening to everybody, and sometimes the stuff that makes uh, life difficult, it gets the best of us. It makes us want to throw in the towel and say, I don't care. But in these uncertain times that you and I find ourselves living in, we must be certain of who we know and be certain of the facts about what he's done in our lives. Can I tell you, as bad as it has been, or as bad as it is right now, it, it, it's, not, it's, it's been bad before. As tough as it is today, it's been tough before. Truth is, we've been down these roads before in your life and in mine and in the life of our country and world. We've been through this before and we've gotten through it by the grace of Almighty God. Look, look, look back over your life and remember the roads and the hills and the mountains. You've cried before. You've been broke before. You've been lonely before. You've been down before. But at every juncture of your life and mine, God was right there with us, picking us up and cleaning us off and making a way out of no way and the truth is today that we are where we are by the grace of God. God picked us up. God turned us around. God dried our eyes. God mended our hearts. God brought us back together again. God did it then and the same God who did it then he's more than able to do it now. The David said the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my leader. The Lord is my guide. The Lord is my protector. The Lord is my provider. The Lord is my doctor. The Lord is my lawyer. The Lord is my healer. The Lord is my comforter. The Lord is my restorer. And he said, because I know who he is, I know he'll supply my needs. He is Jehovah Jireh. He will provide just when I need it the most. He will make it come to pass. Just when I need him the most, he will step in and he will make a way. So though our days may be uncertain, 
Though our lives may be uncertain, be certain of who you believe in. And when you know who God is for yourself, then you always know what God shall do. If you know who he is, then you know what he'll do. When you know who he is, then you know what he will do. Who is he? Well, he's the God that stepped out on nothing and just said, let it be. And everything that was not came into being. And if God could step into, into chaos and create cosmos, then he can step into the chaos of my life and said, hush, let it be. Let, let peace be. Let joy be. Let strength be. Let hope be. When you know who he is, then you know what he can do. Who is he? He's a doctor that never lost a patient. So when my mind gets sick and my body gets sick and our world gets sick and our country gets sick and our faith gets sick, he is able to heal us and make us well again. Who is he? He's a doctor that's never lost a case. Well, when things get rough and we cannot see our way, he will step in and he will say, case dismissed. Sins are forgiven. He is the God who does all things well. And I'm so glad this morning that there are some things I do not know. I don't know what's going to happen next on the Supreme Court. Don't know who will be our president in a year or so. But I do know who God is. And I know that no matter who's on the Supreme Court and who's in the White House, God will still be ruler of the world. And no matter what they do, he will take care of me. And because I know he'll take care of me in the midst of uncertainty, I will give his name praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Don't let your situation, don't let your struggle, don't let your sickness, don't let your sorrow steal your joy. My grandmama would say, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. No matter what you go through, don't lose your joy. Don't lose your praise. Don't lose your shout. Don't lose your song. Don't remember that God is still on the throne. And he is able to do what no other power can do. He's got all power in the palm of his hand. And when he gets ready, he'll step in. He'll show up. He'll make a way. He will deliver. Won't he do it? Is there anybody here who knows he will? How do you know? Been down before. He picked me up. Been out before. He brought me in. Been dirty before. He cleaned me up. I've been messed up before. But he put back the piece again. And here I am by the grace of God. And I'm stronger, and I'm wiser, and I made up my mind that the earth may reel and rock. Struggles may come, problems may come, pain may come, death may come. But I made up my mind of this one thing I'm certain. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to wait. I'm going to trust him. Because can nobody do me like Jesus? Can nobody make a way like Jesus? Can nobody give me joy like Jesus? Do you know him? Have you tried him? Has he been your friend? Been your healer? Been your doctor? Been your lawyer? Been your comforter? Has he been your mother, father, sister, or brother? Then say yeah. The road may be rough, but we've been here before. And the same God who was back then is still the same God who's here and now. So I go to my seat with the words I quoted earlier. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrow, he is the one who stands by me. And the path that be my portion may be through the flame of flood but his presence goes before me and I'm covered by his blood many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know I know I, 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 I know he holds tomorrow and I know he watches me 
So I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. 